Hey guys, this is Pete and we're back with video number two. I got my buddy Carver here and today we're going to show you the number one thing I want you to focus on when you go out on the court where you're going to play a match or you're going to practice that I think is going to help you get to, to the zone very quickly. Now before we get into today's video, make sure that you watch video one because this is part of a series and each video progresses on the next concept. Also, make sure that you comment on every single video because just by commenting, you're gonna enter a raffle to win a free clip sensor. So pretty cool stuff. All right, let's get into today's video. I have my buddy here, Carver A. Rant. You were on the uh, Prince Hot 100 at one point, I right? was. No, I was now tell everybody what the Prince Hot 100 so is. So basically, it's um, in junior tennis, it's uh, the top 100 kids in the nation based on how they've done in the past month. So, um, fortunately, I think it was for August of that year I was in, I had the best or most points achieved um, within the top 100 in the 18 and under. That's pretty cool. I'm pretty proud of Carver. He's also now going to, he's got the hat on. Mercer University. I committed to play tennis at Mercer uh, not too long ago, about uh, two weeks ago. And they're ranked top 50 in Division I. Is they that are, right? they are. So Carver is a baller. Enough said about that, all right? But what we like to focus on when we go out and we practice, we start in the short court. We don't go way back to the baseline. Carver can bang the ball. He hits the ball much harder than I do. But we like to start in the short court. And the number one thing we focus on is height. I believe that when you get your height under control, that kind of builds around your whole game. Because then you're going to be able to hit the ball deep and high and uh, it keeps your opponent from attacking you. How important, I know I watched a couple of your matches and tournaments and you guys hit the ball very, very hard, but how important do you consider height and depth to be in junior tennis? I mean, I think it's everything. I mean, uh, just from watching college matches recently too, I mean, the majority of their misses, I would say, were in the net. So, you know, to, uh, the ability to start off early and get the ball over the net and the way you want to, I mean, it's the fundamental of tennis. If it's not over the net, it's no chance of it getting in. That's right. So, I mean, it, it starts everything, over the net and in. Mm -hmm. And when you get it deep, that's where you can set up a lot of balls and mm -hmm. put away. And that's my favorite thing, deep to the backhand, short ball, forehand cross. All right. So, my number one play. <laughs> that's right. So, this is a drill. Actually, I saw Nick Saviano do it. He was a, he is a great coach coached over 50 top ATP and WTA players. And so they do this drill where they're focused on 100% with the feet. So you're gonna see our feet moving right away, 50% power, and we're looking to get a height going over the net. We want the ball reaching its peak, its highest point as it's going over the middle of the net. So be looking for that as we hit. All right guys, so here we are, I'm gonna rally with Carver. See that we're not gonna be hitting the ball too hard. We wanna to establish some top spin on the ball though and the same height over the net every time so we can get in a nice rhythm with the ball. Okay, again, 100% with the feet, 50% power. Looking for that height, that ball is obviously too low over the net. So I want to get my ball a little higher now. That's pretty good height. As you can see Carver's on this toes, moving his feet. Good. Now we're starting to feel it a little more. As you can see, now we're establishing a rhythm to our rally. And then as we get a little more warmed up, we can hit the ball just a little harder in here as we rally. Working on this footstep every time. Now the next thing I want you to think about is if you rally in the short court and you're finding it hard to establish your spin and control and height, you can warm up with one of these low compression balls. I don't consider them junior balls, I consider them training balls. So watch, even Carver and I can have some good rallies with these balls right here. Working on establishing the height. On those toes, Carver. Good. That's it. See how the ball's going over the highest point? As it's crossing the net. And really getting a good rhythm with these balls right here.
Now the next thing we can do is we can start to work on mixing up our spin. So what we have to do now is I have to hit one top spin and then the next one slice, even if it's a forehand. So this really helps you get the mastery over your spin shot. There we go, one top spin. Now I'm gonna go chip. Carver's gonna go chip. Now I've gotta go top spin here. So top spin, top spin. He's going chip, chip, top spin, top spin, top spin, chip, chip. Oh, that's a low one. Top spin, top spin. Life. Life. Now the last ride we'll do is we'll just mix it all up. We don't have to do top spin slice. We can, but we want to add them all in there. So Carver really mix it up. All right, Carver, so how'd that warm up feel to you? I feel good. I feel like I got into a rhythm right off the bat as opposed to just going out and starting for the baseline and hitting the ball as hard as I could. Yeah, absolutely. You get a rhythm. And the thing for me, too, I don't know, uh, he might have felt a little different. Even the first couple of minutes, maybe because the camera's on or whatever, just getting my old body warmed up, I didn't feel like I was in a rhythm till like the very yeah, end. So 100%. I, I think one thing that, that you want to think about when you're going out there is just don't do this a couple times and then go back to the baseline. I think you want to spend a minimum of like five minutes, yeah, five, I like to five to ten minutes doing this until you really feel like you've established the control over the ball. And then when you go back to the baseline, you'll find that you're right in a great rhythm. And then you can start to go low over the net, high over the net, hit harder when the ball goes short. But you're going to feel the ball a lot better. Uh -huh, definitely. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, Carver. Yeah, thank you, Pete. And guys, uh, let me know. I want you to comment below. Do you do this drill? Have any of you done this drill? Comment below. And what do you think about it? And if you haven't done it, I want you to comment and tell us right now that you're going to go do it this week so we can kind of be your accountability buddy. Uh, remember, just by commenting, you are entered into a raffle to win a free clip sensor. And be looking out in your inbox in a couple days because we're going to come back with video number three. And you're going to get to see me play some points, which is kind of cool. And you'll see what my number one shot I used against my opponent that day to exploit his biggest weakness. Okay? So you want to be able to have many different shots you can go to. That's what it takes to be a mixologist. We'll see you on video three in a couple of days. Take care.